Well, after that highly publicized pause, the Johnson and Johnson vaccine being administered once again, how San Diego's handling its rollout. And that as we await an update from health experts on wearing masks after being vaccinated and what they're saying already about activities this summer. And the warning in effect along the shores of Coronado after a shark sighting over the weekend. What lifeguards are saying, ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. ABC 10 News starts now with breaking news. And good to have you with us. We do begin with breaking news out of Santee, where police are searching for the person who shot a driver through the neck. It happened just before 8 this morning on the 125 exit on the Mission Gorge. Officers forming a line to walk down the street to search for shell casings and evidence. Meanwhile, the victim managing to make it to a co-worker's house to dial 911. At least one bullet hole visible in the window of his truck. Police shut down the road for about 45 minutes, but it's back up now. And we're working to find out that driver's condition, but we're told he is expected to be okay. We're also trying to figure out what led up to the shooting, and we will, of course, keep you updated. Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccine getting the green light over the weekend to resume. ABC 10 News anchor Mary McKenzie working to find out where in the county the shots will be administered again. San Diego Fire Rescue says they're only using Pfizer and Moderna vaccines for now. And Cal Fire tells me Operation Collaboration will continue using Moderna and Pfizer as well until otherwise directed by the county. Use of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was paused for almost two weeks after 15 women developed a highly unusual type of blood clot out of nearly 8 million people who were given the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. But now, according to media sources in the Bay Area, UC San Francisco has reported the first known case of a blood clot in an adult man after he received the shot. The vaccine was never conclusively linked to the clots, but it now comes with an updated fact sheet. Overall, the CDC concluded the vaccine's benefits outweigh the risks. We can now say, you know, we take this very seriously. We've looked at it. Now let's get back and get people vaccinated. And we're still waiting to hear back from the county on any other sites where the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is being offered right now. Mary McKenzie, ABC 10 News. Well, meanwhile, the CDC expected to update its guidelines soon for wearing masks outdoors. Those guidelines expected to focus on people who have been fully vaccinated. And it comes as summer approaches and people weigh the safety of outdoor activities. One thing the CDC has commented on, summer camps for children. Agency giving those the green light but recommending similar safety precautions being taken at schools, at least three feet of social distancing and wearing masks. They say camp activities should be held outdoors as much as possible. And here in San Diego, a batch of vaccines being made available specifically uh, for some local teens, the Sweetwater High School emailing families, to let them know they have hundreds of doses available for students 16 and up. Teens that age are eligible for the vaccine all across the county, but this is specifically part of an outreach effort in National City. And we just know that the, the opportunity um, to do it is there and if we can help um, encourage our young people to, to get there and do it in a place that they know and trust, then uh, we're going to be there for them. South Bay, one of the communities in San Diego hardest hit by the pandemic. Health experts saying making the vaccine accessible to everyone, including teens, is an important step in rebounding. And those students have until tonight to sign up for this program. The lifeguards in Coronado are asking people to be cautious in the water after a shark sighting over the weekend. ABC 10 News reporter Marie Cornell shows us what they're doing now as a precaution. Lifeguards say it's not unusual to find sharks in the water, and while you can't avoid it, they are asking people to be aware of their surroundings. Sunday morning, lifeguards say a man came face to face with a shark that was about eight foot in size all while he was swimming a couple hundred yards north of the main lifeguard tower in Coronado. Lifeguard Captain Sean Carey describes what happened. It just circled him a few times and then he swam in. Even though the man made it out of the water safely, the incident has prompted lifeguards to put out signs like this, warning people about the shark sighting. Because of the circling behavior, uh, that took our response to a level two response, which means that we're gonna post signs stating there was a there was a shark sighted. But lifeguards say it's not unusual to see sharks in our area. Earlier this year, there was another sighting also in Coronado where a shark bit this swimmer's fin. In that case, he was also able to make it back to shore without any injuries. Anytime that you go into the ocean 
you are going into the wilderness. It's, it's like going for a hike in the mountains. So when you go in the ocean, you could encounter all types of marine life that could potentially be a hazard. So lifeguards recommend checking the conditions before heading in and always go in the water with a buddy and swim near lifeguards. Marie Cornell, ABC 10 News. Later this week, President Biden will be speaking in a joint session of Congress for the first time in his presidency. The invitation from House Speaker Pelosi asking the president to share his vision for addressing the challenges and opportunities of this historic moment. The address comes as the president continues to respond to the pandemic and tries to pass massive infrastructure legislation. His speech is scheduled for Wednesday and will be carried live right here on ABC 10. An expedition to find potentially thousands of barrels of waste on the ocean floor. Today, Scripps Oceanography will release the results of what they found off the waters of Santa Catalina Island. Comes after an LA Times report claiming that the area was used as a dumping ground for the manufacturing company, the company that was making DDT. Recent UC Santa Barbara study says that as many as half a million barrels could still be underwater today. And scientists from Scripps Oceanography boarded the Sally Ride, one of the most technologically advanced research vessels in the U.S. They spent weeks surveying about 50,000 acres of the seafloor, and they will reveal their findings during a virtual press conference. It'll be at 1.30 this afternoon. As we wait on those updated guidelines from the CDC, another return to normal could be on the horizon for travelers. EU reportedly preparing to open back up to American tourists just in time for the summer. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details. This morning, word that Americans could once again be taking off for destinations across the Atlantic as early as this summer. The New York Times reporting vaccinated Americans will be allowed to visit places like Paris, Barcelona and Rome again after the pandemic closed borders over a year ago. The head of the European Union telling the Times all 27 member states will accept unconditionally all those who are vaccinated with vaccines that are approved by EMA. Many European economies rely on international tourism. EU officials now seeing vaccines as the solution. The summer travel season in Europe is essentially akin to uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday for retailers in the United States, where they make the disproportionate amount of their money from these few summer months. Americans wanting to travel can do so with a green passport by presenting either a negative COVID test, a positive antibody test, or a vaccine certificate from the CDC. If you have been vaccinated, you essentially are, have access to the easy pass lane on a toll road. You can just breeze right through. Companies like Common Pass and Travel Pass beta testing mobile vaccine passport apps to speed up the process. Sharing your status with the airline or border authorities before travel or by showing it throughout your journey. The news already helping the airline industry. Just days after other countries like Iceland announced plans to reopen to overseas travelers, flight searches jumped 201 percent. And people are rushing to book the deals. Miami to Madrid, round trip this summer, about 300 bucks. New York to Rome in the fall, about 400. But we should tell you, even if the EU makes this recommendation, still individual countries will very likely be making their own decisions. The French president, though, has said that he does want to open up France to vaccinated Americans. Gio Benitez, ABC News at Newark International Airport.